Lately, a lot of people here at Donut have been riding their motorcycles to the office. And it's got me thinking, how do I do that? Well, join me as I figure out how we can get into the two-wheel scene together. Grab your notebooks and commit this to memory, because at the end of this episode, we're gonna get our motorcycle licenses. I've been interested in getting a motorcycle ever since I was a kid. And if you were a teen in the late 90s and early 2000s and weren't into motocross, you probably didn't have a pulse. Travis Pastrana was jumping his bike into San Francisco Bay. James Stewart invented the Bubba Scrub. Man, these guys were awesome. Motorcycles are an entirely different side of being a gearhead, and it's a community I've wanted to join for some time now. First things first, before we even get to talking about running down to a dealership or nonstop browsing Craigslist to buy your first bike, it's a good idea to find out if you even really, truly want a motorcycle. Motorcycles are alluring. The sense of freedom and the low cost for high speed, the idea of never having to look for parking. Sounds amazing, right? Well, all that can quickly disappear if you take a ride and realize it's not for you. So if you decide to follow through and get your motorcycle license, the next step is to get some motorcycle training. We went with a private lesson by Class M1 here in LA. It's a little more expensive than a group class, which is the cheaper option. Today we're gonna to learn how to operate the bike, we're gonna learn how to ride the bike, and then we're gonna run through a mock test. I got my gear, let's see if we can ride this thing. A motorcyclist training course does a few things for you. First, it teaches you the fundamentals of riding, braking, and using the clutch, etc. An instructor will go over all that with you. The course covers street riding skills and strategies, the rules of the road, and you'll get actual experience by riding a motorcycle. A bike is even provided for you to ride. Steve is setting up the course right now to uh, do a mock DMV test. This class has definitely made me want a motorcycle even more now. Can't wait to do more bike content. So you took a training course, you went down to the DMV, and you got your motorcycle license. You are now a legal motorcycle driver. At this point, I'm sure you've been browsing the web, looking for bikes that fit your fancy. Let's start off with narrowing down what you're gonna be using your bike for. Is it gonna be your commuter? Are you gonna do some weekend canyon carving? Or do you want something you can take on longer road trips and highway cruises? Once you figure that out, it'll be much easier to narrow down which models to start looking at. It's probably not the best idea to go buy a touring bike if you wanna hop around the city. Oh, we always hit the mirror. Oh, he hit their mirror. He hit that mirror, hey? Eh? The second consideration is to figure out how much bike you can handle. And before you jump to full bore testosterone fueled status of believing you can handle any size motorcycle, which I'm sure you can, Dylan, maybe think of it like this. Was your first car closer to the likes of a Corvette ZR1 or a Camry? If your parents were responsible adults who cared for your well-being, I'm sure they didn't opt to give you a 755 horsepower sports car. Treat buying your first motorcycle with the same caution. The easiest way to get yourself hurt is to buy a bike outside of your skill level. I know it's tempting to buy a used Hayabusa that'll go 200 miles per hour for six grand. Don't do that. Aside from the performance of the motorcycle, the actual physical size of the bike is an important factor too. You want something that fits your build and that you're also capable of handling. The 313 pound motorcycles are pretty heavy. I looked up the weights of a few and they range a bit from a 313 pound Honda CB300F to the 943 pound Harley CVO Limited. That's a thick boy. Obviously, I'm jumping categories of motorcycles here, but you get my point. Physically bigger bikes can be harder to handle, and your first ride should be easier, not harder to wrangle. Also, like your first car, it's a learner vehicle. It's gonna get scratched and dinged and learned on. Your first motorcycle will see the same fate, no matter how good you are at taking care of it. You're new at this, remember? 
You're gonna make some mistakes that will inevitably end up with you yelling a few choice cuss words while the bike lays on its side after a tip over in a Brunswick bowling parking lot. Uh, that happened to Jeremiah. Who wrote this episode? There are pros and cons to buying new versus used. Figure out what you can afford and don't be afraid to ask for help. If you do end up going the used route, just like you would if you were to buy a car from a private seller, do your due diligence. If you can, bring a buddy who's got some more knowledge than you to look it over. Don't have any friends? Well, one, I'll be your friend. And two, ask the seller to bring the bike to a shop that will perform a bike inspection. It usually costs around $100. It gives you some added insurance that a qualified mechanic made sure everything is okay. There are online forums for practically every specific model out there. And a lot of those forums have people who have gone through this experience before, and they're willing to offer up whatever help they can. Hey, even go onto the donut subreddit and ask. We have some motorcycle moderators who might offer up their opinion. Two wheels, four wheels, the donut fam welcomes everyone. So I'll go through the process I went through when choosing my first ideal motorcycle. I've always wanted a cafe racer style bike, so I started on the web, seeing what models are currently out there. I found a bike I liked, searched some forums to see if that model would be a good beginner bike, and lo and behold it was. Then I went over to a dealership and sat on a few of them. I wanted to make sure the bike wasn't too big or too small for me to see if they fit my stature. I'm part of that big boy nation. So regardless if the bike met my expectations aesthetically, I needed to make sure it fit me physically as well. Getting involved in any new hobby can be daunting. Trust me, I know the feeling. Just ask me about my snow cone machine fetish. It's intimidating to join a group of enthusiasts who have been indoctrinated into the group for years before you have. But the motorcycling community, like the car community, is a pretty welcoming bunch. The majority of motorcycle riders want to grow the community and do so by helping out and being welcoming. Now that I've got my motorcycle license, hopefully this video has inspired you to go out and get yours.